video. Kelly S and Evatel weekly Sponsored. reset. Let's check it out. Yeah, retail keeps me too busy to play anything else. Really. Hello, Internet. Taliesin here, and welcome to another episode of the Weekly Reset. Taliesin and Evertel's wondrous yeah, wisdom this, this room show behind him in keeps getting better. a week where the new trading post is up. And as I write and record this video, it's still February, and Blizzard haven't given us any hints as to what is on there in March. But obviously, by the time any of you are watching this yeah, video, we, we already know. everyone is going to know. So the I trading post have to not reset. Uh, the trading post reset broke the game. That's why there's a reset uh, server reset today so Trading they're taking servers now i have to basically fake it and hope that i'm right so tell you i'm like gonna fake it it's his wow, hair i had no idea the new trading post stuff would be so great disappointing did suck, yeah. i really love the new hood and scarf and cloak combos in green blue yellow and the mount for filling the traveler's log is amazing been great. very underwhelming and oh, we didn't get quiver back pieces this month but maybe next time so glad we got quivers this month Month. Totally called it. But more than anything, I'm just we glad that the launch Got went so chest. much smoother than the last one. Congratulations, Bl No, it was a shit show, obviously. Yeah, I think that should about cover it. Joking aside, though, it has <laughs> been interesting to see what looks like a new Medivh transmog set data mined with a trader's tendy cost, which doesn't look like it's for this March trading post, but suggests yeah, that WoW might be about to embark down a Final Fantasy XIV style. Here is a transmog set that is literally exactly your favorite favorite major lore character wears, which I think I would be totally here for. Yes, please. Give me the Jaina set. Give me the Tyrande set and the Anduin set and the, the Bane set. set. Oh, we are going to talk about Bane this episode. Oh boy, are we going to talk about Bane? Because this is a special episode of the Weekly Reset. Although the 10.0.7 PTR is being updated constantly and just as well, honestly, because by my calculations, the patch should be with us by the the end of this month, if you're hey. watching in March, which yeah. you probably are, or at the very latest, the start of April, which also means, by the way, that I would expect a 10.1 announcement incredibly soon. And that's all great. Oh but in the man, 10.1 announcement would be nice because then we'd know what the next raid is going to be. We're going to get a new raid in 10.1. I mean, it is kind of slow news time right now, which is strange because in my opinion, and I think in the general consensus you need to of read the, the player base, the treasure chest. I will Flight check it out. Absolutely I'll go check out the trading it. post. And if the game is hitting a lull, then weirdly, most people seem okay with that so for me i'm just about done with 10.0 now yeah, yeah, i've maxed out all my renowns i've got cutting edge with some good logs and i got the razageth skin and my glory mount a handful of max level alts which i'm vaguely gearing up in my spare time yeah. i still log in every day he thinks uh that well the patch is going to drop by the end of the month or early next month and then uh we'll get an announcement for the next patch hey, but often which that's probably would drop at the end of the summer and chip away professions and it feels good honestly it feels good to have hit my targets for a patch without an arbitrary grind that i have to keep up to date with on top of that and the thing is 10.07 isn't really going to add many new targets. It's another smaller patch before the yeah. main event of 10.1. I think the patch is shaping up to be really interesting, if not particularly significant gameplay-wise. The Forbidden Reach is just stuffed full of elites and rares. There are 29 special encounters listed on the Forbidden Reach and meta damn. achievement. The Vault Exploration, which you can do with the keys you get from killing the rares, is fun and unique, and it's going to be a great way to spend a few weeks gently catching up on alts, including and this isn't even a joke, okay? Your neglected prop paladin. Seriously, that's all fine. I think that's gonna... The, the paladins are getting... For paladins, I feel like this is gonna be a complete refresh. Paladins are getting so many changes in 10.0.7, it's fun. ridiculous. But for me, the real reason to be excited about 10.0.7 is the story content. Mid-June, okay. Because when the Dragonflight sense. roadmap was revealed at the end of last year, and with it, Blizzard's new approach of having two smaller patches so between middle, major yeah, middle of the summer instead of the customary singular 0.5. That's right, yeah, these are the spring patches. Yeah, we'll get the summer. I stop gap. Here. One of the advantages that or, was mentioned uh, by devs in interviews was the extra opportunities this breathing right, space want the kid would give playing. to the narrative team, having a whole extra installment per major patch to add new story elements, allowing for more and better placed plot progression and side narratives. And so far from what we've seen on the PTR, 10.07 seems to be living up to that promise. Nice. And that's what I want to talk about in this episode, because actually 
it's looking quite promising. That's right, fam. Welcome to the Weekly Reset 10.07 Story Special. Obviously, most of this show is going to come under Bluebot spoiler territory because I'm going to be discussing stuff which is playable on the PTR, but we won't be going into Redbot territory here. There is so far no major data mining to discuss in terms of plot and narrative. But even okay. then, I'll be giving fair warning before mentioning anything that I think is especially spoilery. So first off, in okay, terms okay. of new story and the new patch, the lead-in to 10.1. The big promise from Holly Lonsdale and the entire point of the patch narratively was that the events we take part in on the right. Forbidden Reach would leave us in no doubt as to where we would be heading in 10.1. We're gonna, it's it's all why. Deathwing focused. And so, so far, that explicit we're probably going underground. has not really popped up on the PTR. Like, I can't sit here and give you a name and theme of the 10.1 zone beyond what we've been pretty confidently speculating since before Dragonflight even released for reasons. Okay, I'll tell you the reasons just in case you don't know. There was a file in the data that had a very spoilery yeah. name and also yeah. a note on it that was like, make sure you rename this file before putting it in the data. <laughs> and someone did not read that note. And it's basically <laughs> hilarious, but also kind of tragic, but mostly hilarious. Somebody but if we her. are going to be in no doubt what 10.1 Point one is all about by the time the Forbidden Reach story is over, then at some point it's going to need to get a lot more specific. Like something is in there that we have not seen. Maybe it's connected to an achievement or some other progress like the Black mm. Dragonflight quest that progresses as you recover more items from the vaults. Maybe it's connected to those journal entries that you collect, which appear yeah. to shed more light yeah. on the origins. It's very and Black Dragonflight Drag focused. But even without that patch. specific reveal on the PTR right now. Now, there are still plenty of stories. Yeah, we talked about that. There will that likely be another dragon riding Like up. the mountain of other books that can be found in the vault, which range from funny character bits like the living book and the Neltharian fanfic opera of the aspects to much that more video is actually up on our YouTube tomes like a song of the depths, which explains why there are so many Naga on the Forbidden Reach and very uh -huh. strongly sets up a return the of Naga. A Shara as yes. well as a very heavily hinting at a return of Galakrond, kind of expected, and yeah, well, we knew the that was the old god who was ripped out of Azeroth's crust by Armin Thule, forming the Well of Eternity in the process. A lot of story Less elements expected. coming up. Are you excited? Well, you shouldn't be, because remember, there are no old gods in Dragonflight, but you know, whatever. The That's old true. gods and the ordering <laughs> of Azeroth is another of those books that we've looked at before, where the most interesting takeaway for me was that I always thought it suggested another con continent existing, separate from the original pre-sundering Kalimdor that Other side of Azeroth. all of the land masses we have currently experienced in-game, on Azeroth anyway, and that theory certainly seems to be backed up by the return of the Night Squall, which tells the story of a famous night elf pirate who sailed to the extreme as yet unexplored west Yes, this pirate guy survived, we talked about. Him. Bringing back unimaginable, previously unknown treasures, and who is now putting together the largest pirate fleet in history to go back and plunder these new yeah. lands on an industrial scale. He so wants to go back to the other side. Yeah, there's, there's, they, they're gonna do the other side of the. It's so easy for them. There is gonna be a, an other side to that. Basically, well. yeah, there is definitely a new continent that we yeah. have never seen. I've got a feeling from the annotations and the ordering of Azeroth that there's some pretty important old god stuff going on there, and I imagine we are definitely going to see it soon. Which means, and there's no gentle way of putting this. There is definitely a big pirate patch coming in Dragon Isles or a pirate pirate expansion. It's probably what he's going to say. I do see that coming. We've gotten a ton of pirate transmog recently, too, whether it's through the trading post or anywhere else. And uh, the whole thing about how have we not seen this continent? Well, if there is a ton of old god influence, we know the Titans are dicks and they like to hide shit from us. So if there's a ton of old god influence on the other side of Azeroth, that the Titans really haven't been able to cleanse. Instead, what they would likely do is just cover it up, not let us ever find it, try to hide it from us, and then don't ever tell us that it exists. That's how the Titans have dealt with shit, and that's probably why, why we haven't seen the other side yet.
expansion happening for 11.0 and suddenly the swashbuckler's regalia that randomly appeared on the very first training guys, post maybe. last month makes a lot more sense doesn't it like i say some very strong hints at the future direction of the story there even if not anything that really points to the immediate destination of 10.1 another more traditional story beat in 10.07 is the Bane questline, and I'll be yeah. honest, yeah. this is the genuine I've reason I wanted stuff to make about this. this video, was to talk about this. We have known that there is a new Bane questline in the data from the first day of the PTR. Most of us still speculate that it will reward the pretty awesome I, I always weapon to live uh, out your yeah. vanilla WoW trailer, Torin That's versus right. Bane. I've always loved, uh, I always thought Bane was a great character. I always thought the Torin were great, in general. But Bane's a great character. Unfortunately, in Shadowlands, he started out strong, and then he just ended up sitting in Orbos the entire expansion. Literally sitting. Like, slash sitting, not doing anything. So I'm glad to see that he's getting some love now. Bear ultimate showdown fantasies, but this week was our first chance to actually play through it. And it is very clear now why Blizzard decided to add this. Yeah, it might be setting up some important or at least semi-important plot developments down the road, but make no mistake, the sure. real reason this questline exists is a lot more simple and cathartic. It's to make Bane badass again and man nice. does it succeed blue spoiler bot yet but in this quest bane is on a mission to find bovan wind totem who has been captured by the knockwood centaur bovan is a character from warcraft 3 who wow. along with rexar rescues a young bane from the clutches of the centaur so oh, there's damn. an obvious symmetry oh, here yeah, and the story is overall used to show bane's hatred of the centaur because of his past experiences which manifests ah. through his distrust for the Maruk, and in particular, Scout Tomu, who has been tasked with helping him, but who has a pretty abrasive personality at the best of times, which naturally doesn't initially help. It's a good, solid, like, half-hour, 40-minute cool. quest line, which is, at times, genuinely quite sad, and ends with a joint funeral of Centaur and Tauren Fallen, which is really beautifully wow. done. There's loads of characters standing around to click on for extra dialogue, and it all obviously sets up the yeah, Cool. Torin finding common ground and respect with the centaur of the Anaran Plains. Everyone it fits holds in hands at the end. With the new beginnings themes of Dragonflight. He and was the sad because the jailer didn't find him the useful. Shadow of our ancestors so. and their legacies. <laughs> it's really, really good. But that is not why I'm talking about it here. Oh no. There is a scene what? in this quest towards the end where Bane gets some bad news and he goes absolutely Postal oh, on shit. the knock hood. Oh, and by the way, I <laughs> oh, love. Shit, look at him. He's fuck. Yeah, Bane is tanking the entire camp. You guys see this? That they called the baddie centaur in Dragonflight literally the not good centaur. <laughs> He's thunder stomping and tanking you know, the you. entire camp. This is just a standard fill the bar quest of killing enemy forces, but you quickly realize that you don't actually have to do anything because Bane is so fired up at this point. He is tanking all of the elites <laughs> in that area He's and going soloing fucking ham. them himself, knocking them in the Holy air and shit. doing a charge, which literally literally butchers them as it <laughs> they're turning into piles of meat damn in when he kills the knock hood, he's fucking they are going literally nuts. squishy animal remains and look this is brutal it's but angry. also incredibly it's cool. badass yeah and that's badass so deserved after two expansions now where bane has essentially just needed rescuing by us multiple times and where huge swathes of memes were made nuts. about how one of the faction leaders of the horde that's was basically what, that relegated was to sitting on a Yep, that was him. The entirety of Shadowlands, that's all Bane did. All concrete floor in the afterlife looking a bit shaken while everyone else did all the adventuring in True. Shadowlands. It really that does feel happened. here that someone at Blizz called a meeting one day and basically said, okay, we have done Bane dirty for a while now. It's yeah. time to remind everyone that he is actually f***ing nails. And yeah, and how do you do that in World of Warcraft history? How do you turn a character into a badass? Purging, of course. Nothing makes a, pur a person more badass than a good old purge. And it looks like Bane's about to purge the fuck out of this village of the Nokud. So here he is. The meat grinder, yeah. Bane nails, the meat grinder. Imagine that becomes his, his like title. You know, we get titles and while he becomes Blaine Bloodhoof, the meat grinder.
glorious to see. I can sit here and unironically say, holy shit, man, do not mess with that cow. Holy he crap, look at all the meat on the ground. And can you imagine saying that just a short year ago? Fuck yeah, 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 that'd be a badass. I want that title that too, right? This questline, which doesn't appear to tie into the main narrative very strongly, is here at all, is probably a testament to how we hope these more plentiful, smaller patches will work going forward. I love good, build good story. That's why I like these patches. Between the raid and that next major patch. Room to explore an otherwise neglected character and see where they're at. It's all very cool in its own right, yeah, but so also that's promising badass. for the future. I guess it's just easier to pace a story when you aren't limited to three single chapters at only three different moments in time to Makes tell sense. it. But for now, all eyes are currently on the Forbidden Reach and that eventual 10.1 reveal. As yes. always, we've linked Wowhead articles in the description covering everything we've talked about here in more detail. And before we go to Evie for the sofa section, I just want to give a shout out to The Pale Beyond, the debut game from Belly Last hey, Studios, Belly which makes game. it WoW news, okay? Because Bell is the king of WoW news. I have not had a chance to play it yet because I've been making this video, but they sent us a Steam key and we will be playing it on our That's very cool. Stream That's nice week. of him so to do that. For, join for, us for, for that. Bellular. I'm incredibly excited. We're super proud of Bell and his team for getting this game made. And the reviews have been awesome, legitimately, too. So it looks like we're going to have a genuinely great time. My hope is that it's cool. genuinely really super good so that I can create a new channel dedicated to Pale Beyond News with thumbnails like this. So, you know, fingers crossed. <laughs> Hello again. It's ad integration time and it's website time, which means oh, it's there you go. Squarespace, the Squarespace time. Plug. So, Here we big go. shout out to Squarespace Here for we go. sponsoring today's video shout and making out to our Squarespace. website practically gleam. So one thing I've really wanted to do is change up our header image. Wonderful. Because, let's face it, our faces have since moved on. There are actually loads of nifty image effects that you can torment your visitors with, uh, but it's also really easy that. to change and replace images with the Squarespace editor. One day, maybe one day when I make a website, I'll uh, use Squarespace, but I haven't had a need to. Yeah, no. I'm not that cool yet. Anyway, all with the click of a button. Another thing I did was upgrade all of our blocks to the new Squarespace Fluid Engine, which is just a really fancy way of saying the ultimate infinitely customizable no. drag and drop experience. Look at Anything that. can just go like anywhere. Our new, uh, just like that one dream I had. Screens and wow. And another editor feature that is invaluable in this day and age is the mobile view for everyone checking you out hey, on the go. Hey, man, with what's our up? Old header image, yeah, don't forget AndyMatch.com. That's right. And like absolutely I'll use Squarespace fully, to make that. We never bothered checking it. So now, thankfully, our new header is... Oh. Well. You know what? It's fine. It's fine! So look, we're making progress. Next on the menu, I'm thinking merch. Oh yeah. Ready to build and rebuild That's and right. rebuild your own That's right. site? Some you good probably won't have to rebuild it as much as that. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Talias and Evatel and it. use code Talias and Evatel to it. save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. I haven't thought of a funny ending to this one, so thanks Squarespace. <laughs> And not, I not, bad, actually, not, not a bad actually. Not a bad To give you the floor <laughs> and, and give your opinion on the story of Dragonflight. It's Man, so they fun. look so and cozy in their sweaters. Story -wise, we always talk about that that, that whole room looks cozy. And like oh, where you're at and things stuff. like that. And now, now that you've like completed Mythic Raid and got uh, 2500 IO score uh, and, yeah. and, just, and, just and like got your bow. And, board, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, like, what, there's nothing else to do for you gameplay wise. So, what what do you think of like the whole story experience? Uh, I mean, Dragonflight's been great. We've, we've talked about this before. Like, it has been good. Overall, I think having Razageth as the big bad is really good because it's so simple. Like, but of course, yes, you know, like, because you there's nothing complete. mysterious about Razageth's motivations. There's nothing you know bald or shirtless about Razageth. It's, she's just a baddie that makes sense. The, the Simple now, so yes. makes that sense. is not in fact the big That's bad. Good. Like, I, I don't want to spoil anything. No, I know. Okay, no. but, but I mean, yeah. the, for she's this a good intro, intro to the big bads. Yeah. Oh, sure, the, sure. This, this long story that we're playing. To go make a website, uh, you know, gonna call it. Like, okay, wow, yeah, local singles. Here. Okay, this You're one's here. bigger and badder. Sure. So much badder. You have no idea. <laughs> well, <laughs> use use Squarespace and use the Taliesin and Evertel code. So bad. He's so bad. You have no idea how bad he is. The other ones don't have any idea how bad he is. He's so bad. You know he's bad because his voice. 
face is yeah. so serious. And, and you know, we're yeah. like, wow, yeah. why is he so bad? What's he done that's particularly bad? And she's like, bro, just trust me. <laughs> trust me though, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, so, so there's that as kind of like the frame, right? right? And there's all the other stuff that's happening within it. And I don't know, I've, I think it's really good. There's loads of story that I have not played through, particularly in like Azure Span, Azure. Azure? What, you mean you haven't mm. done like all the side quests, the story quests? I haven't, done, I, I haven't done all the side quests yes, either. Yes, I don't have time for that shit. I mean, I, you know. <laughs> you don't have time for the Tuscar? I mean, I, well, they have babies, so. Are you serious right now? Oh, I, I feel for I have time for the Tuscar. I have time for like the objectively best race in, in the entire game. Are you serious? Listen, listen, I got my staff. <clears throat> I have my Drakthir staff from the raid, so got, I'm good now. You got the Drakthir staff now. like a, a week after I made you a staff. It, it was, well. I think it was literally like the day after. Yeah, and, and like, you know, I, she was really happy with it and everything and like literally the other day about two days ago I just happened to be getting some footage for a video and I happened to be in the feast which I don't do anymore because I've maxed out all my renown right yeah. but I happened yeah, to be I should be doing a, the feast and I don't feast. I'm really bad about I, that I I'm yes really bad about a lot of things right. in so I completed the quest, uh, the <laughs> quest <laughs> yeah. there, and I got a flavor packet drop for me Lucky which okay you. aren't as expensive as they used to be but still go for 60k That's on the holy auction shit house. and I, I like messaged Everton what? I was like yo got a flavor packet I maybe I should be doing this you thing. Want. And Avatar was like, I don't really, don't really use it. How could I resist the invitation? <laughs> You're doing fresh? Yes, we are, Midias. Yeah, and, and I think yeah, there's, we are. Just lo there's just loads of really nice stories about built to pop into the, the questing. Like, I love the Syndragosa stuff. I just we don't got to finish this rant so back and forth. And her voice actor is so good. Like, you know. She, she completely elevates it for It me. just takes it to another level. Yeah. Like, just, just really good. So, yeah, so even just seeing familiar characters, but not feeling like they're being over overused like i know some people sure. are wondering about like what's happening next in Nilfarian, and some people yeah, are like yeah. you know how much of him do we want <laughs> or like how yeah much i don't want this to become a Nilfarian expansion yeah in the community at the moment that uh like Nilfarian's gonna come back mm. you know and i i don't I, think I, that's I, gonna I don't oh, want God, that. I hope not do guys when are you please. starting in about a minute anyone wants it i think you have to like you know the, one Come of the great heal things the first about few sounds good flight is this idea of like a fresh slate mm -hmm. and you know that's very much the theme for the dragon flights as well you know like everything is a fresh slate yeah. the the red dragon yeah. flight yeah. have like you know they've got their eggs back and the stuff and they mm -hmm. you know they, the ruby life pools are kind of coming back to life and mm -hmm. you know it's right. this great future for the dragon flights the black dragon flight are it is know, all everything's starting to go well uh, patch so far and I think things are going to take a turn for the worst. Fear as well, like they're learning about themselves and they've literally come out of stasis and the entire world and future is theirs right now sort of thing. The Blue Dragonflight have, you know, uh, in their questing, they've, you know, crossed a boundary to uh, actually start rebuilding properly and Caligos right. got over his stuff thanks to the Tuscar. <laughs> Caligos. Yeah, yeah. Caligos has a family now. Yeah, well, I was like, <laughs> Caligos was all like, I just don't know what to do about the Blue Dragonflight. It's like, yeah, I'm not uh, sure you're the right leader. Yeah, no. It's like, you spent, what, 10 years just not <laughs> Take a turn for the worst. Yeah. I think things, you know, think we've we've been doing all these quests and things okay, have been getting dude. better. I'm just thinking maybe in the Dragon Isles, up until kind of we kill Razageth, right? Like that's where the story ends right now. We kill Razageth. Uh, these other primal, you know, dragons have been released. That shit's happening. But for the dragon flights, we made a lot of progress for them. They've kind of come back together. They've regained their strength. So it's been kind of heading in the positive direction. And I think within the next patch, we're going to learn a little bit about what happened with Naltharian and everything. And then shit's going to get wild. We're going to go underground and we're going to be like, oh my god, we thought we had everything under control. All this shit's happening underground. What's going on here? And uh, that's when things are going to, you know, like I said, take a turn. And then we'll start to really understand who the big bad is going to be at this expansion. Well, if you guys want to finish the banter, you can. Of course, the link for this video will be under my YouTube video. You can check it out if you want. But I love Taliesin and Evatel. They're great. But you know what I love more? Playing some WoW. I think it's time to get into it. Uh, let's start a heroic run. And uh, I'm about to post the group.